Well, uh, in our third part, we're going to talk about further uh, about uh, the monopoly and monopolistic, uh, uh, a monopolistic competition and oligopoly. Uh, so let's start sharing. So imperfect competition and strategic behavior are our main topic and in which we are talking about uh, oligopoly in practice. So cooperative behavior when firms agree to cooperate to uh, restrict output and raise prices, uh, their behavior is called as a collusion. Uh, may occurs with or without an explicit agreement. Uh, these explicit agreement occurs, then there is an overt or covert uh, collusion, uh, depending on whether the agreement is open or a secret, uh, where no explicit agreement actually occurs, there is a tacit collusion. So uh, depending upon the legal framework in which they are operating, uh, if the legal frameworks allow them to make a, a oligop, uh, these type of collusion, they do an agreement. And uh, by this way, they can, if the legal framework doesn't allow them uh, or it is an illegal, so they, that can be a, a tacit collusion as well. So firms in an oligopoly often choose to compete actively with each other in an attempt to attract customers, uh, consumers away from their rivals to increase their overall share of the market and to increase their profits. So there are strong incentives for oligopolies to compete with each other through pricing, advertising, product quality, and innovation. Consumers usually gain from such competition. Uh, the reason is that if they have a competition, so the price is gonna go down. Uh, if they are producing good quality, so the consumer is gonna get good quality. And one of the thing that uh, we can get it with this competition is a variety or innovation, innovative uh, new products. So th this is gonna be the uh, good thing that we can observe. So the importance of entry barriers, in the absence of a uh, natural entry barriers, oligopolist firms must create entry barriers if they are to earn profit in the long run. And that are uh, in uh, here we are discussing few uh, things that through which the uh, oligopolist uh, firms uh, create barriers. Um, the first one is a brand proliferation as an entry barrier. Now, when they are building up a brand, so it is very, uh, very difficult for the new firms to create a, a new brand or as well as to compete with already established brand. So think about many brands of a soap, shampoo, breakfast cereals, or cookies. Each firm in the industry produces several brands of the differentiated products. A large number of differentiated products leave small market share available to the new firm. So that's the way that uh, advertising as a barrier to entry, as I mentioned in the beginning as well, so very heavy advertising has established strong brand images uh, for existing products. A new firm may have to spend heavily on advertising to create its own brand images in consumers' mind. Mm -hmm. A new entrant with a small sales mm -hmm. uh, but large required advertisement cost find it itself at a substantial cost disadvantage relative to its established rivals. So established firms already have a lot of money, so they, they can do that, but the new entrants cannot do that. Uh, the third thing is purchasing rival firms as an entry barrier. So normally it, it is also commonly observed uh, that in the corporate world, acquisitions, mergers, and all these things are taking place. Uh, the reason behind is that uh, these new firms, when they bring a new idea, a new product or an innovative way of doing something. So these large giants who, who are already in the market, they buy them, they offer them such attractive price and buy that and then utilize their monopoly power uh, to get maximum uh, profit. Uh, and we, uh, we see this uh, by purchasing the rival, the large firms can prevent this firm from growing and become competitive threat. So a prominent example of this phenomena is Facebook. Uh, in the last 15 years, Facebook has acquired over 80%, uh, 80 other companies, including Instagram and WhatsApp. So we see that uh, these uh, giant firms are uh, buying the small firms and they are uh, doing the things that they can control. Now, is it uh, important to understand whether we, we discussed this many times before that the, the competitive outcome is good for the uh, society uh, or the economy and monopoly uh, has some dead, dead weight loss for the society or an individual level, but in general, it is good for the economic growth and economic uh, uh, advancement. Uh, but here we see some firms in uh, whether whether the oligopoly is also going to play any important role in the uh, and the economy. So some firms in some oligopolistic 
uh, industries uh, come closer to joint profit maximization in the short term. In other oligopolistic industries, firms compete too intensely that they come close to the achieving competitive prices and outcomes. So that's both are possible in an oligopoly. To the extent that price remains above competitive level uh, and output below, oligopolist will less efficient than perfect competition. Uh, so in that respect, we see that it is not possible that the oligopolist go, go to the level of a uh, competitive market and it is also not possible for them to stay at a level of a monopoly uh, because of incentive to cheat. Uh, so by this way we see that uh, it is not uh, as efficient as the competitive uh, market uh, but in the long run profits that survive competitive uh, behavior attract entry profit persist only in so far as, as entry is restricted. Some economists argue that op oligopoly leads to more innovation uh, that would occur in either perfect competition or monopoly. So they argue that the oligopolists face strong competition from existing rivals and cannot afford the more relaxed life of the monopolist. And we see uh, in our daily life, like, uh, like as an Apple phone introducing uh, every six months or a, a few months, uh, a new version of the uh, phone. Uh, and similarly, uh, the, the competitive uh, rival uh, Samsung is also going to do this. So it's not a time that any time uh, these competitors going to go and relax. They are always on a uh, competition. So oligopoly is an important market structure in modern economies because there are many industries in which the minimum efficient scale is simply too large to support many competing firms. So this is again uh, the reason what we discussed for natural monopolies. So they, there are also similar type of reasoning for uh, existence of oligopoly in the industry. Uh, the challenge to public policy is to keep oligopolists competing rather than colluding and, the, and using their competitive energies to improve products and to reduce cost rather than merely to uh, erect uh, entry barriers. So this is all what we want to discuss for uh, uh, imperfect uh, competition uh, and the strategic behavior. And here we uh, cover the two different types of hybrid types of market, monopolistic competition and oligopoly. I hope you uh, like that. And uh, uh, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, and I'll see you in other uh, videos.